bondage, works of the flesh, religion. And so, in James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, sometimes we wonder what, why, where, how, when. We say, God, make me an answer because we see the problem sometimes. And sometimes we don't see it, but we're going to get into that. We ask God, well, why, what, when, where, how? And so in James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Without, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Amen. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. Yes. That give it to all men liberally. God doesn't just give us a little bit. God gives us this in abundance. Let him ask God. That give to all men liberally and upbraideth it not, and it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. See, sometimes when we ask God and we 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 kind of pull back because we don't get the answer right away. We don't see the manifestation of what we prayed for right away. Daniel, he prayed for something, and 21 days later the answer came. But how many know that it might have gotten difficult for Daniel on day three? Day four, day five, day six. Then the angel finally came and led him an insight and gave us a glimpse into the spirit realm. He said, I would have been here sooner, but the prince of Persia yes. withstood me. I had to go through some demonic forces in order to get this answer to you. God, he, then he gave us some encouragement. He said, from the first day. From the first day, that's right. The first day you opened your mouth and prayed, the, the, the answer was already on the way. You just had to wait for the manifestation yeah. of it. And so when you ask God for wisdom, God sometimes just says, wait, I'm, I, I'm, I'm working this thing out. I've already worked it out. I just got to bring it, you the answer. And so he wavered that for, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave in the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not a man think that he should receive anything of God. That's where that boldness comes. Boldness is not, I think God is going to do it. Boldness says, I know God is going to do it. Boldness says, I know God already did it. Boldness. And so when asking God and you're seeking God for his will and his purpose, he will never leave us without wisdom. He has a perfect plan. In Jeremiah 29, 11, a very famous uh, scripture, I'll read it. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. Forget what you're looking at. Forget what you see. I know the thoughts that I, the purposes and the plans that I have for your life. Don't look at what's going on on the outside and determine what I'm doing on the inside. And then he comforts us in Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of his law. The secret things. God says, if I haven't revealed it yet, it's not for it to be revealed. Mm -hmm. His disciples, so many times they wanted to know, well, Lord, when are the times coming when you're going to set up your key? He says, it's not for you to know the days of the time. And if you understand Jewish law, Jewish history, it was the father that set the date for the wedding. The groom and the bride had no clue. He was mimicking that. When he said, when I come back, you're going to. But then he said something else. He said, when the leaves start to fall from the tree, you know that it's fall. So we're not clueless. He gives us wisdom about what things are going to go on and what, how things are going to transpire. But he gives us an inkling that when God hasn't revealed anything, we are to take comfort. It's like real uh, 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 in, in the natural. There are certain things that we don't share with a seven or eight year old. 
We don't talk about bills with a seven or eight year old. We don't talk about other stuff that we're trying to do uh, around the house. and everything. It's too high for them. God is saying you're wanting to know some stuff that is too high for you. I need you to become as a little child and just trust. Come on. Yes, God. Just trust me. Don't, don't try to figure it out. See, I turned the lights on. We came in here, the lights on, and we can turn them off or whatever. But we don't know how the wires and everything are connected. All we know is that we have faith in the switch. We got faith in the power. I don't have to always figure it out. And so in trying to figure out, well, God, what, what would you have us to do? What, where would you have us to do with that? And it's not so much that you're clueless. You know that God wants you to do something. And you know that God wants you to do what he's put on the inside of you. It's deciding or deciphering the where, the when, the how. And God says, I'll give you wisdom. In Psalms 1 Verses 1 through 3. I'll read that. Psalms 1. Verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. That, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. My God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, when you're trying to decipher and you're, and you're, and you're praying and you're in prayer, it's important that you get some godly people around yes. you, some people that see, some people that have the ability to see and to hear from God. Because one of the things that you don't want to do, and if we look at the scriptures, I, I don't know what Joseph was thinking about when God had revealed what he revealed unto him, but he went to his brothers and opened the blood. This is what God and God, oh, what, really? Oh, that's going to happen to us? Oh, we go bow down to you, Joseph. Oh, okay. Got something for you, Joseph. Yeah. And so Joseph wasn't really operating in wisdom, I don't think, at that point. See, sometimes when you're when you when God is revealing certain things and he hasn't revealed everything, because he didn't have he didn't reveal the how he was going to do it. He just told him that I'm going to do it. And so it says, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's a progression. You see somebody walking, and then the next thing you know, they're standing. Because the person, the ungodly person, has got their attention. They're filling them up with garbage. And then that next thing you know, they're, they're sitting, sitting in the seat of the scornful. It says, don't do that. Use wisdom. Have wisdom. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law he doeth meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Someone that's planted by the rivers of water, a tree, their, 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 their resources, their sources are unlimited. We're connected to an unlimited source. Yes. We have to understand. We are connected to an unlimited source. When I talk to people and I'm on the phone and I'm talking about multi-million dollar buildings, I'm beginning to re restructure the way I yes. think about this thing. And I begin to restructure. When I talk to people about bands and I talk and it's 20 something and 30 something thousand dollars, I don't bat an eye because I know who my father yes. is. I'm looking for my inheritance. Wherever it is, God, you're going to reveal it to me. I'm going to keep walking this thing out. I'm not going to try to make sense of it. I'm just going to be like, where, where, God? Where, okay, where, I, I'll talk to this person over here. I'll talk to this person over here expecting. That's where the Bible says, he that, he was talking about he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. So as I seek him, I'm expecting. I'm expecting. I'm expecting, as we were coming in here, the pastor who, who's over the church, he said, Pastor, it's coming. Your building. I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wisdom and understanding what God wants. Ultimately, the reason why God, and it's, and it's perfect, all things work together for the good to those that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, is because there's some people... He's trying to connect problem with answer. Oh, that's good. Problem with answer. There's people with problems and they need the answer. 
That's what it's all about. The school, the every ministry, it's about an answer. I've got you strategically placed in a land where there's a problem. Yes. And now I've connected you because you're the answer. Oh God. Oh God. Moses in Exodus chapter 3. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And, the Lord, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, called unto him, out of the midst of the bush. And, and he said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. I'm going to pause right there for a moment and then we're going to go on. Moses, who had just, you know, if you know the story, he had slew a man. And now he he, he goes off in the desert. He meets Jethro. He marries one of his his, 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 his daughters. And now he's, he's a family man now. He's got his family and everything. He's settled. And that's how sometimes God uses us. God takes us through a process. God takes us through some things, and we, yeah. we wonder haphazardly, what, 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 what does all this mean? And see, there's three stages to knowing your call. There's the first one that God only knows. Uh -huh. God all by himself. You just think that stuff just haphazardly happening to you, just aimlessly walking through life, don't even know the call is already there. God doesn't wait till you get uh, get situated, get some training, get some learning. No, 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 no. The call's already there. That's why a lot of these children are catching hell in a handbasket because their call is already there. The enemy is already peeked into their future and is trying to stop the problem from connecting with the answer. But God is so wise, he's saying, even though the enemy may have a little season where I'm going to use all of that and make it a part of the answer. Yeah. And so the burning bush represented something that needed, God needed to do to get Moses' attention. He needed to draw Moses' attention. Notice that he didn't speak to him until he saw. That's right. That's right. If we could get some people to see, God is saying, if I could just get you to see. I'm trying to get you to see. See, we walk up to people and we and we witness to them and we, 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 we plant and we water. The whole time, God is trying to get them to see. See the light. See, see the light of the gospel. It says the, 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 the God of this world has hid the, hid the gospel that they might see it. And when they see it, they turn aside. Whatever they're doing, I'm going to turn aside. Whatever, whatever they're into, they're going to turn aside. And when they turn aside, God called, yeah, that's me. That, that was me calling you in the county jail. Place that I never thought I would be. Didn't know how I wound up there. Facing multiple life sentences. Oh, I got a testimony. I'm, I'm talking about they were trying to hide a brother from now on. You know what I'm saying? Playing with guns and hanging around with people that played with guns. And so here I am in this county jail and I asked God, because I knew that it was something that he wanted me to do. I had a premonition. Uh -huh. the, the bush was burning, and I, I was it was just something on the inside of me. And I didn't even know what I was doing up there. All I knew is I was drawn to the Bible study. Here I am in the county jail, and there's brothers up there doing Bible study. I'm like, what kind of stuff is this, man? They in, they in jail. I go up there. I turn, I turn aside because I see the sight. I see that some people, I felt comfort, I, I felt led, so I go up there, and I, and I, and I start, and I begin to just sit, sit with the brothers in the Bible study. Then one day, the brother who leads the Bible study says, I'm getting ready to leave, and so uh, God placed it on my heart, I need you to lead this Bible study. Whoa, wait a second. You need me to lead the 
Bible. I don't know what. What do you mean, lead the Bible study? So I said, okay, God, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I mean, if I just if I just sit up here and just read the Psalm to people, or I just we turn to a scripture, read and pray. That's what I'm gonna do. And so one night I'll never forget it. I'm sitting there on the Bible study, and everybody's gone. But I felt, you, you just know there's a nagging, like, God, there, there's something you want me to do. There, there's something that, there's something else here. There's something for my being here. And so I'll never forget this. I prayed out loud. I said, Lord, I know it's something that you want me to do, but, but, but what is it? In my left ear, three words, audible, teach my word, scared me. Because I didn't realize how someone could get some close to me so quick. And then when I turned, there was nobody. And I still, because I don't dis I didn't discern the voice of God, I'm looking like, hey, y'all, stop playing, man. What, who, who is that? Nobody was in 10, 20 feet radius of me. I go in my room and I'm crying and I'm asking God, okay, God, you got me. I can't do this. I started to do, man, what you mean, preacher? I ain't no preacher. I ain't no teacher. What you mean? I can't. Well, I, can, I can give somebody some scriptures. I can tell them about Psalm. I can give them the word. I can tell them, Matthew, go to here. I don't know. What do you mean? And I said, God, if you're going to do this with me, then I need you to teach me. I just, I yeah. need the Holy Spirit. I need you to teach me. I need you to teach me your word. And he did over the course of many years. Yeah. That encounter, and we're gonna. I, I, and, but but I realized that the encounter didn't start there. He had already called me back here uh -huh. for a problem that it would exist <laughs> over here. Yeah. All good. Come on. All good. Some people are going through hell in a handbasket right now because they're being made to be an answer to a problem that somebody's going to have tomorrow. God is going to use their testimony. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. There are people who are literally sitting in shackles waiting for their answer. And their answer is going through a process. Being processed. So here is Moses sitting on the backside of the desert. In verse 5, it says, he called unto him and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, the God, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land and unto a land and a large Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jezebites. Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherein the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto the Pharaoh that I may bring forth my people, the children, out of Israel, uh, excuse me, children of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses had been to Egypt many years before. Little did he know that what he had been in, Egypt represents the world system. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, we teach on, on, on Wednesday nights to... I would say about 50, sometimes it's 45, 50, 60, sometimes people, men and women who who privately, Tuesday nights, excuse me, Lady Brown Franklin, Tuesday nights. And these are men and women who are in transition. They've come out of prison, some of them still on parole, some of them. And initially when we came in, we got the, who are these people? Mm -hmm. 
coming in here. But as we begin to testify, yeah, we begin. I begin to tell where I was from. That this, this, the, 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 the shackles begin to fall off. Oh and one of the things that God told me when we teach life skills, we teach job skills, and it's a partnership. He said you can't teach life without teaching Jesus, because Jesus says I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And, and in some of these men and women, and I know that God has a plan. I just, so I'm just, I'm just Lord of the wind, the where, the how, how do you, do you, do you need me to get a bus and bus them up? Because there's some men and women who the class makes them hungrier for more of yes. the word of God. There's a woman in there on last Tuesday night, broken. You can see it in her face. Just asking, I, you know, you're talking about marriage and you're talking about all of these things, but but I had a, I had somebody to leave me. And then when they left me, something happened with the child and everything like that. And I told them about uh, 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 when Jesus said that, you know, uh, uh, about the revelation and he was talking to his disciples who the men say that I am I said the same way that you need a revelation of who God is is the same way that God is going to give you a revelation of who your husband is mm -hmm. but there's a process right. you're an answer but in your being an answer God is refining you because he needs to help me he needs somebody to help him so the only way you're going to be able to help him is if you're, con you're, you're, you're conditioned to be the help that he needs Ministry often begins before we even recognize the call of God on our lives. Yes. Right. I recognize that what I had been through gave me the heart to be able to speak to them. And so God said, even in your mess, I was making you an answer all of that time. You thought that it was just wasted time and that you were just going through all these different things. But people need to be, to be able to identify. Moses could identify with them because he was both Egyptian and Hebrew. He was both. People, Paul said, I became all things unto all men that I might by some means gain some. People need to know that you can relate. Being able to relate, and not necessarily to specific sin or the specific bondage, but they need yes. to know, listen, I know what bondage looks like. Yes. And I know what the answer is. I know who the deliverer is. Now, God didn't say one of the things that I like about God. God is all powerful. He's almighty. God could have done it himself. Uh -huh. right. Children of Israel cried out, Pharaoh dropped dead. Everybody let him go. He could have yeah. done that. God says, no. I own the earth, but I've given you dominion. Uh -huh. And so you're my kings and my priests and my priests. I'm going to use you to orchestrate deliverance. That's how I get glory. That's right. I'm going to get the glory out of you. Yes. And so this encounter with, with God God gave him the instructions of why it was that he went through what he went through. In Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Exodus 4, verses 1 through 5. God will use what you already possess. Yes. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his mm -hmm. hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Amen. <clears throat> Here's Moses. God telling him. You know, and he's he's human. We 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 look at it hindsight. You know, it's twenty twenty. I was just sharing with Lady Brandon in the car. I said, you know, we look at we look at people in the Word of God, and we kind of like, man, he should have known. He said, no, you got to put it in context. God tell you, all right, I need you to go over to uh, the president of Iran, and uh, there's some POWs over there, and uh, I need you to go over there and tell them to let them go. God, I ain't got no. 
security clearance. I ain't no politician. I ain't been to Washington. I ain't, I don't know nobody. I don't know uh, President Trump. I don't know none of them. You mean go over here? They just gonna let them? Yeah. Go over there and tell them to let them go, and they go. They go. Well, okay, guy. Well, what? What if, what if they won't believe me? Who am I? What? Are you, who are you? Same scenario. Nor will hearken until my voice. But they will say, the Lord have not appeared to thee. Moses is already processing, like, wait a second, I got to think about this thing rationally. God is trying to yeah. make him look in the spirit, and Moses is looking at the natural. Yeah. And the Lord said unto him, what is in thine hand? And he said, a rod. Some people will not go forward in ministry because they're looking for something that they need that's on the outside of them. Mm -hmm. Some people will not pray for any people. Some people will not move forward in ministry. Some people will not do anything outside of what they can perceive that God has equipped them to do. But the one of the things that we have to recognize is that when God calls you, he's already put it on the inside of you. That's right. You're already the answer. God is just saying in obedience, move forward. And so he tells Moses, what do you have in your hand? He said, a staff, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And he became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. And then, then the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and he caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, had appeared, and, and Jacob have appeared to thee. Something that's ordinary in the hands of God becomes extraordinary. That's why I always refer to myself as an instrument. Mm -hmm. If you look at a fork long enough and we begin to, wow, that fork is really, wow, that's a marvelous fork. But the hand behind the fork, the Holy Spirit behind the man. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. If you look at the very scriptures where it talks about the, the Ark of the Covenant being carried and somebody even touching the Ark and they fell dead, how much more you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. God is saying, if I send you forth, they bet not touch you because you have my purpose over you. I've made you an answer. I've already, and when I send you, there's nothing that will be able to stop my answer from getting to the people. He was encouraging Moses. Listen, if I sent you, you unstoppable. That's right. We ought to be telling people I'm unstoppable when it comes to the purposes of God. Yeah. There is nothing that can stop me from moving yeah. forward for what God has in my life. I'm an answer for somebody. Yeah. I'm an answer for some people. And God is not going to allow anything or anybody to interrupt the answer getting to the problem. Yeah. God. It wasn't in God's inability to, to do it. God had to convince Moses. He had to convince I need you to be able to walk this out with confidence. Yes. I know what I'm going to do. I just need you to be obedient and move forward. I, I know what I can do. I, I know that you've got all the host of heaven behind you. You ain't got nothing to worry about. So I got you. And so he tells Moses, Looking down in verses 10 and 12, and I'll read. Here's Moses again, going back to his fallacies, looking back to his imperfections. And Moses said unto the Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither herefore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. He says, I, ain't, I, wasn't, I wasn't eloquent before you got me, and I ain't eloquent now. I, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I, I ain't going to be able to do this. And he said, I am slow of speech and of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, who made man's mouth? Yeah. And or who made the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? I made you. Stop looking at you. Just like the rod was ordinary until God touched it. God, God brought life into it. God gives us the ability so that when we do go before Pharaoh and we do go out and we do minister, we tell people, 
but God. The testimony helps with that. We show them where we've been, what we've been through. We show them all everything that everything that could have disqualified us, but God used it to qualify it. And then they say it was nothing but God. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and their testimony. There are people who are in poverty, but they need to see somebody else who was broke before. All right. And tell them that God can do it. There's people who are sick. Who need to see somebody who was killed be able to tell them that God is able to heal. There's some people who are going through all types of bondage in their mind. Who are going through abusive relationships that need to be able to say, listen, God delivered me from that and he'll deliver you too. God got a purpose and a plan. So when you give people that, you're giving them hope. People need hope. That's when we when, when I see that area where we were, where we went over there. We're talking about people speaking to these parents and some of the people who were in there. Some of them are believers. They're like, I don't know if they're gonna listen, and I don't know da 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 da. And see, that's that part right there. Well, I don't know if they're gonna listen to me. I don't know. But you go in the power and the anointing of God. Yeah. And God is still always telling us it's not about the numbers. Yeah. Right. Don't worry about the teach. I need you to teach. If one of them, if the angels rejoice. Yeah. Because one soul comes to heaven, how much more are we? And so, oftentimes I encourage Lady Ben, I said, listen, some of these parents are going to apply it, some of them are not. Yeah. You're not up to, it's not up to you to, to, to be encouraged or be discouraged whether they apply it or not. The Bible even talks about the, the parable of the seed and the sower. Some fell on good ground, some fell on stony ground, some received it with glasses and everything like that. And then when they leave it, you're like, man, what? You, what? I've been to. I know apostles can be from years of teaching, teaching people can recognize that there are some people that you're going to teach, that you're not going to reach. Right. But God is saying that I still need anyway. you to do the right. teaching right. anyway. Right. Anyway. And we don't know because here we, here, here we are uh, years later in, in, in Moses' life. And Moses, what we would have saw as a soundbite or a snippet, we would have saw Moses kill that Egyptian man. Mo, God ain't going to use him. He murdered him. He just, all right, God sitting on him. I, that, I'm going, yep. The one that you disqualify, I'm going to use him. Yep. Yeah. Just so that I can found, this so that I can confound the wise. Just so that I can let you know that when you think you got it figured out, I've already got it worked out. That's it. Just when you think that they're a castaway, I'm going to uplift them and exalt them to show you that it ain't got nothing to do with what qualifies them in man's eyes. That's right. When I qualify them, then he gets the glory. And so, in wrapping up and closing, we're going to look at a few more scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. Very familiar text. 2 Corinthians, oh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. It is already written of you. How will be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that are come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God had prepared them that loved him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches the deep things, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. I want to tie this in with looking at Psalms chapter 40, verses 6 through 8. Psalms chapter 40, verses 6 through 8. 